Sound needs to come up, somebody. Thank you. is a brief introduction to a very complex topic that has been going on since human beings have been on this planet. Now most of us in the West know very little about the jinn, if anything at all. They never made it into our culture, uh, yet we have been engaged with them all over the planet in many ways since we first came here. Uh, in the West, we know them primarily through folk tales, the ancient Arabian Nights, oral tales that um, talked about magical things. The jinn are part of many of these stories. Aladdin and his lamp is probably the most famous one. 
And that's really where the term genie in the bottle comes from. It's a corruption of the word gin. When these oral tales were translated into French and English in the 17 and 1800s, the term gin was corrupted into genie. And so in our culture, we tend to think of them as rather silly uh, creatures uh, who are fantasy. They're funny, they're quirky, they're not to be taken seriously, they live in bottles, they come out in smoke, and they grant people uh, wishes that never really uh, come true in the way they are meant to come true. Well, that suits the jinn does just fine, because the less we know about them, the better able they are to operate under the radar, and they are operating in plenty of ways. They are real beings, they are quite powerful, they are masterful shapeshifters, they have uh, powers that we ascribe to, uh, as supernatural. They are extremely intelligent. They are organized. They have lifetimes, families. Uh, they live in their own world. Um, they, uh, they have their own society. And yet many of them really don't like us. And those are the ones that we are interacting with. There are good ones, just like human beings. You wouldn't categorize all human beings as good or bad, plenty in between and a mix. The same with the jinn. But most of the time, when we have interactions with them, it's usually on the negative end of the scale. So these are some of the most common ways that they have uh, manifested to us. They can't take human form. They're excellent shapeshifters. Um, smoke, fog, mist, you saw in the introduction that they're made out of smokeless fire. Nobody knows the true shape uh, of the jinn, but uh, they can appear to us in ways that suit their purposes. They are uh, participants in all kinds of supernatural experiences, mysterious creature and entity contacts, ghosts and hauntings, attachments and possessions, ET abductions, entity sexual assaults, and all kinds of other extraordinary encounters. Uh, now I mentioned that no one really knows the true shape of the jinn, but they do have favorite forms, and uh, one of them uh, is the snake. This goes back to ancient times. Today we're seeing it uh, expressed in the reptilian kind of uh, form that we see in uh, contact with the reptoids from, uh, who are alleged to be below the surface of the earth and also the reptilians who are involved in ET abductions. Phantom black dogs, which are everywhere around the world. Uh, dog men, uh, other mysterious creatures. On the left you see uh, the Beast of Bray Road, one of the most famous dog men. Um, of modern times, sightings are still going on today. Uh, these are hybrid-like creatures that uh, contain uh, too many animals or animals and humans. The entity on the right is called a grave digger or a grave robber, seen in many parts of the Appalachians today, a combination with an armadillo body, a pig snout, uh, alligator snout, pig's feet, and uh, rooting around in the graveyards. Uh, there are higher gin and lower gin and some of these mysterious creatures involve lower gin forms. Uh, winged uh, sorts of entities, this is uh, a side from a sighting in northern Pennsylvania in a rural area around Butler. This entity is seen uh, quite often at night. Uh, we've gotten to the point where just about anything that looks like it has wings is called Mothman, and that's really not so. It's Mothman had wings and was a particular kind of entity. But um, this would be a, uh, a very favorite form of gin. In fact, Mothman itself would be a good candidate for gin. Uh, they come through interdimensional openings on the earth. There are certain places on the earth where the interdimensional boundaries are very thin. And uh, we find uh, areas in constant commotion with hauntings, UFO activity in the sky, landed craft, Bigfoot sightings, entity uh, encounters of all sorts. And uh, sometimes there are waves that go along with this, and the Mothman uh, wave of 66 to 67 was one of those. <laughs> Actually, most of the activity involved ETs, lights in the sky, and uh, craft and entities representing themselves as ETs. Many of our demonic cases are misdiagnosed as demons. They're really jinn. And uh, for the past um, decade plus, I have been uh, spending a lot of time in what I call persistent negative hauntings. These are really nasty cases where uh, malevolent beings attach to places and people and nothing seems to be able to get rid of them. And in our culture, we automatically label this demonic, uh, but in other places of the world, uh, they would be labeled jinn. In fact, most of the world is very comfortable with the idea of jinn, um, except us. And uh, we just uh, never in incorporated much knowledge about them into our culture. They can take human form as well, sometimes very alluring and beautiful, sometimes rather crazy and mysterious. The entity on the right, the 
black and white is from a case I had in Florida where um, the gin shape shifted into cat-like creatures, creatures that look like cats with rabbit ears, uh, black pillars, shadow people, uh, flying, uh, mysterious flying orbs uh, that would come through the wall at night uh, with inner parts rotating in them. And uh, then this uh, character who would show up, and at first she didn't know whether to laugh at him or be frightened, except he radiated an intense amount of malevolent energy, which they are capable of doing. That's to vampirize the life force in us. Uh, but uh, appearances that make no sense. Uh, and um, they like to take forms, basically, that confound us and shock us. And that's to keep us off balance, so that we don't really know what we're dealing with. Uh, and the more frightened and uncertain we are, or the more we think we're dealing with other kinds of entities, and there are lots of other entities out there, the less likely we are to realize that underneath all of that we are dealing with gin. Sometimes they look like just masses of moving energy. This is a photograph from uh, another case I had in um, Pennsylvania, uh, a, one of my persistent negative haunting cases that uh, the land was ruled by a single jinn, and um, they didn't like the fact that people came and reoccupied the land and announced that it was going to make them miserable until they left, and it did, and they did, and more people came in, and it did, and they did, and so the cycle goes on. But uh, the person who uh, had spent a lot of time on the land while I was there investigating this, and I spent three years on this case, felt watched from an upstairs window of the farmhouse quite often. Couldn't see anything physically, but he would take his camera out, and wherever he felt watched, he would take a picture of the window, and one day this entity showed up in the window. Now, the drawing you see that looks like a little red doll uh, is his drawing. He had the impression it seemed to be holding something, and uh, the picture that's on the right is just a duplication of the main window, but uh, it's an entity that has saw teeth and cat-like ears. Uh, and uh, was seen on other occasions by other people involved. In fact, we had um, an entity that we called the uh, demon cat uh, because it looked like a cat with withered, uh, leathery brown skin and would peer in the window at us. I, I, saw, I did see that myself. Uh, this entity manifested as orbs that would bounce around on the planet and disappear into the ground. Very threatening shadow people, mysterious creatures with too many legs and moving parts. Um, and uh, an invisible presence that uh, literally sapped the life force out of people who were there. Uh, chickens were raised on this property for a while. The chickens were mysteriously uh, killed in rather strange ways until they were all gone. More chickens would be brought in, they would be done in. Uh, I could spend the entire uh, time talking about all the ins and outs of this very peculiar case. The um, upshot of it was, Score, gin one, humans zero. And uh, I've been seeing that a lot in some of these persistent cases. What led me onto the gin in 2004 in a different way, now I'd already been acquainted with him through my research in magic and occultism, uh, but uh, in 2004 I began getting a lot of email about shadow people. And uh, people were having bedroom invasion experiences where a tall figure that looked like a man in a hat who was solid but with no features uh, would be invading the bedroom, either standing in the doorway or standing beside the bed and evoking tremendous uh, fear, panic, and terror from people. Sometimes there would be eyes, sometimes not. Sometimes there would be a hat, sometimes not. And uh, people wanted to know what these entities were because they were not communicating and rarely did they attack people, but yet uh, people were absolutely terrified. So I thought, well, I'll collect a few dozen cases, interview some people, try and get to the bottom of it. I don't know what's going on. And here I am, uh, 11 years later, still pursuing the mystery because it's like an octopus with many tentacles and it goes out everywhere. And every time I follow one of those, I uncover new territory that's very unsettling. <coughs> and, uh, can we ever get to the bottom of it? I am not certain. What I did find out about shadow people is that there were certain core experiences, certain characteristics. Uh, these experiences happen equally to men and women, children and adults. Sometimes they're one-off, sometimes they're serial. Sometimes they hit people during a bad patch of life when they're in emotional upheaval. Sometimes they follow families for generations as, as though there is some sort of curse on the blood of the family lineage. Uh, and uh, they usually don't communicate unless you can prod them into some sort of communication. Sometimes they will communicate. 
Um, they go through matter. Uh, they can dissolve, reappear. Uh, I have seen them uh, transform from a shadow person form into like a tornado of swirling black, like black ink, go through the ceiling, the floor, the walls. Uh, they just simply vanish. The boogeyman under the bed is one variation of that. It is not childhood imagination. Uh, and sometimes they have uh, tracks that they seem to follow with repeat experiencers where uh, there's a certain place, a certain place in the wall where they will come, come through. Animals do not like them. They react in a very negative way. And um, some people can be pestered by these things throughout their lives. So uh, I started studying shadow people and uh, looking at their characteristics, looking for patterns. I've collected well over a thousand cases. Um, there are uh, there's a main core experience and then satellite core experiences that exist around that. Uh, but uh, these are some examples of how people have perceived them. Uh, you can see that sometimes they're rather vague in shape. The lumpy head is quite common. This is very characteristic in gym lore that when they shape shift, especially to human form, they don't get everything right. Something is wrong. And very often the head is what seems to be wrong. Now, why do they wear hats, especially bad fashion hats? That's a very good question. Um, but it's either because they figured out that...